This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hi, I'm Speed Supersonic, and you've definitely heard about icebergs. But if you don't know what an iceberg is, let me tell you. An iceberg is a tier list of the most common knowledge when it comes to a certain property, whether that's a franchise or an industry, or even a person. I've seen a couple of Kanye West ones out there. But the iceberg I'm here to talk about today is the Sonic the Hedgehog iceberg. If you know me, I love Sonic the Hedgehog more than anything in the world. I know, it's sad, but with its 30 year history, there's so much information out out there and behind the scenes details and facts and theories. The iceberg I'm here to talk about today was created by Twitter user Semi-Frequent Sonic Facts. And as you can tell from the Twitter user's name, they know a lot about Sonic the Hedgehog facts. There's a lot of juicy stuff in here, but before we get to that, I'd like to introduce our sponsor, Skillshare. Being part of the Sonic fan base means that there's a lot of art, creativity, and just overall collaboration that goes on here. Honing in on that craft and becoming better is something very important, and learning info from others is also very amazing, and Skillshare is the best place for that. With Skillshare, you can join thousands of classes that will teach you exactly what you need to know about the creative skill you're trying to hone in on. I've been peeking in at a bunch of these, whether that's graphic design, writing, and visual effects. I've been on here a lot more than I'd like to admit. I remember my friends recommending me this class from Gabrielle Piccolo, and it's been well worth it. It's all about character illustrations and just perfecting that craft. Classes like these work really well. It's worked out for me personally very great and I'm so happy I signed up. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So what are you waiting for? Click that link and join Skillshare today. Now, without any further ado, let's dive in to the ultimate Sonic the Hedgehog iceberg. She my best friend, yeah, we not a Sonic without a doubt is the most popular Sonic the Hedgehog meme. He was created in 2010 by YouTube user Onyx Heart with a video entitled How to Draw Sonic. Although he deleted the video later on, it's lived on and is re-uploaded on YouTube. Since then, it has exploded in popularity, being used very frequently in the official Sonic the Hedgehog social media accounts. It even had an appearance in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie that came out in 2020. I bet Onyx Heart is out there somewhere very proud and also wishing that he copyrighted that image. Mr. Needle Mouse was the name used by Naoto Shima during the prototype stages of Sonic's early development, specifically when they were designing the character. After almost 30 years of the fanbase believing that, it was later confirmed that the name was actually Mr. Hedgehog all along, as Needle Mouse is a literal, direct translation of the word hedgehog. This confused some fans as Sega used the name Mr. Needle Mouse as the prototype name for Sonic the Hedgehog 4. I don't know. Rest in peace, Mr. Needle Mouse. We'll never forget you, bro. Why Does Sonic Need a Car references what a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog fans and game reviewers said when Sonic the Hedgehog Kart Racer started to release. Starting in 2009 with Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, people started to bring up that Sonic doesn't really need a car, he's fast enough and could win the race in an instant. Around the release of Team Sonic Racing, the question was finally brought up to Izuka and people who worked on it. They said we should stay tuned as there would be an answer in the game's story, and it was revealed that it was just to make the race fair. Which was pretty much everybody's theory when the question of him driving a car was brought up. During the time that Melee was in development and releasing, Sega and Nintendo were working together. With Sonic games releasing on Game Boy and the GameCube, many people were wondering and speculated if Sonic the Hedgehog would be added to the game. Yuji Naka did say that it's possible for him to be added to the game, but due to time constraints it was never able to happen. It was later revealed though that Miyamoto and Sakurai said it was possible and if the opportunity presented itself they would have added him to the game. So that's where the story of Sonic and Melee ends, right? Well, no. In the magazine Electronic Gaming Monthly, which is still running to this day, they put in an April Fool's joke that had screenshots and said that Sonic and Tails were unlockable characters in the game. This was the biggest hoax in Smash Bros. Melee history, even getting a response from Nintendo Power Magazine themselves. Even though Sonic never was added to Melee, he did appear in the next Smash entry, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, with him being a returning character to each entry since. Oh, one of the original concepts for Sonic the Hedgehog in its early development was that he'd be a part of a rock band. This was really going to be a thing and featured in the sound test, but was later removed due to time constraints and difficulty programming it into the game. The band members included Sharps the Parakeet, who's the guitarist, Mock the Rabbit, who's the drummer, Max the Monkey, who's the bassist, and Vector the Crocodile, yes him, 
on keyboard. As I'm sure you all know, Vector was the only one who survived the axing, in terms of being a staple character. The others have appeared, but only in comic slash manga form, with all of the members appearing properly in the Sonic the Hedgehog manga released in 1991 to promote the original game's release, and Archie, who loves to do their deep dives, hit homage and included them in a comic. <laughs> Your Name the Hedgehog refers to the idea of fan creations, or original characters, quote-unquote. This was very popular in the Sonic community during the early 2010s, late 2000s, where many fans would basically just take Sonic's character design, recolor it, add some weird things to it, put a random name in front of the Hedgehog, and claim it as their own. There are a lot of infamous ones out there like Cold Steel the Hedgehog, and a lot of other memes out there. Fan Sonic creations got so big that it was an entire part of Force. It's not as talked about or common in the fanbase anymore, but it still does exist if you go digging. Sonic Shorts is an animated series on the YouTube channel Sonic Paradox. New episodes of the series were being produced from 2009 until 2013. With HD collections of the volumes being produced later down the line, Sonic Paradox is still producing content, but Sonic Shorts isn't a thing anymore. They were extremely popular and amassed an incredible amount of views. These are definitely Sonic classics on YouTube. You Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account has been around since 2009, but it became very notorious in 2016. During Sega's restructuring in 2015, a lot of employees were let go, including the then PR manager, and steps Aaron Weber, who was originally a brand manager for Sonic the Hedgehog. He left the company for a couple years but then returned. He took over the role as PR and social media manager, completely reshaping what the Sonic the Hedgehog social media was. It was very jarring when things started happening. There were memes, self-awareness, jokes. It was actually highly respected looked after and many other companies started doing the same thing. Weber no longer works as the social media manager anymore, he's moved up in Sega and is now working at Sega Japan, but to take his place, Katie and Justin now work on the social media, and in my opinion have been doing a really great job. There aren't as many memes anymore, which many people speculate is due to some fan backlash against too many memes happening. It's not confirmed that this is the case, but it is considerably noticeable that there are far less memes on the social media. Anyways, I really enjoy the Sonic social media and support it, and I think you should too. I think these people really care about the character. Super Mario Bros. Z was a very popular web series that aired from 2006 until 2012. The show was originally cancelled in 2009, but returned with the final ninth episode in 2012. Even though it's called Super Mario Bros. Z and does have a very big Mario emphasis, it's just as much a Sonic show as it is a Mario show, with Sonic and Shadow being two of the main five protagonists. The show follows them on a hunt to find the seventh Chaos Emeralds before Metallics does, who wants to become the most powerful being in the universe. Universe. The show is going to get a reboot that was announced in 2015 with a Patreon being started up, but it later got DMCA'd by Nintendo. Big surprise there. There is a pilot of the reboot that was released in 2016, but last year it was announced that the show will be returning and is back in production, but we'll see what happens there. Genesis does what Nintendo don't was a marketing term used around the time that the Sega Genesis was being promoted. At the time, Nintendo was the top dog, selling the most units with their mascot Mario. That was an 8-bit console, and with the Genesis being 16-bit, it was a much more overpowered system. There were many commercials that used this term, and I'd say it's lived on as one of the most popular marketing terms in all of video game history. <laughs> Madonna was originally going to be Sonic the Hedgehog's girlfriend. Sonic's take on a Princess Peach love interest? She was designed to be this quote-unquote conventionally attractive woman, but due to her character design, personality, and the simple idea of Sonic having a love interest, Sega shut it down as they wanted Sonic to be more of a kid's property. Madonna actually has made an appearance in a rebooted form in the Archie comic, which seems to be where every scrapped or obscure Sonic character makes an appearance. She's obviously nothing like her original design or character. Much like Sonic's band, she was an early concept and was fully abandoned. Don't expect to see Madonna ever again. <laughs> Rough transition into 3D is a term, but also a meme in the Sonic fanbase. A lot of game reviewers often say Sonic had a rough transition into 3D. And although the fact that his transition to 3D was far less graceful than Mario's, before talking about the most recent Sonic title, whether this is IGN or GameSpot, it's an overused term and has become a running gag in the Sonic community. Mainly for the fact that this is not the case, as the first two 3D Sonic games were Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2, which are very highly respected games still to this day, and 
than before. Have they aged as well? Not necessarily, but for the time they were incredibly revolutionary and well received. The same people who say this gave the game shining reviews when it first released. It's just a really dumb term that people use. It's just simply not true. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog recolorings are a very popular thing in the franchise and community. Kind of tying into the original characters, some people will literally take designs of characters and just change them to a different color. I'm outside in an AMG. The Carnival Night Zone barrel is one of the most infamous parts of any Sonic the Hedgehog level. In Sonic the Hedgehog 3, a lot of people had trouble getting past this section. Now, you might be wondering why, it's just a barrel. A lot of people didn't know how to get past this section and even use the barrel. This took some people forever to figure out, but eventually figuring out that all you had to do was press up and down on the D-pad. It became infamous as one of the most aggravating and confusing parts of any Sonic Sonic the Hedgehog level. It's now memed on, there's official merchandise of it because that's just how infamous it is. It will go down in history and hopefully future generations will know how this one works. Dark Sonic, also referred to as Dark Super Sonic, was a transformation used in Season 3 of Sonic X during the Metarex Saga. In the episode Teasing Time, Sonic turns into this transformation, quote-unquote, with the use of fake Chaos Emeralds in his insane rage for what's going on with Chris. I know, Chris. It was only on screen for a couple seconds, but has gone down in history as one of the most popular Sonic transformations, even though it's not really considered a true transformation. Ian Flynn stated that, but I guess that's still up for debate. A lot of people like the idea of a fully white-eyed, black form of Super Sonic, which has spun off into many different forms of fan art, fan animations. It's ridiculously popular. Some people love it, but also some people think it's kind of silly. I don't know if we're ever going to see Dark Sonic again, but it'd be really cool to see if they could develop this any further. But with that being said, let's move on to the next layer. There's Sega of America, and then there's Sega of Japan. Two wanted very different things for Sonic the Hedgehog. Everywhere from his design, to his personality, to aspects of him, and just the brand and franchise as a whole. Original concepts from Sega Japan eventually changed so they could fit a western market. Although Sonic was always meant to appeal to that demographic, some of the changes were very different, including his design, which could be seen on box art, cartoons. There are basically like two continuities, the Japanese one, which we're actually living in today, and the American one that included like the Sad AM characters and stuff like that. There was even an American Sonic Bible made, which we'll get to later. American Sonic lived on somewhat through Archie, and of course there's American made Sonic stuff, but this is mainly the early years of Sonic and the two conflicting versions of him. I'm not talking about figurative big cameos, I'm talking about literal big cameos. In Sonic Adventure 1, Big was a very playable character, I think that's very notorious. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people love his character, some people hate his character. He's a polarizing figure, but I think that the Sonic fanbase loves him now. There are just so many memes about the little guy, or big guy. Well, in Sonic Adventure 2, he's not playable, in fact, they trimmed back the playable characters a bit, kind of. Splitting the stories up into two stories, but still having six playable characters. And if you've played Sonic Adventure 2, you definitely know that Big would not fit in that story or gameplay. But I think they felt bad for the big purple cat, so in levels of Sonic Adventure 2, you can find Big hidden in the level. There are these little cameos, he's sitting in a tree, he's getting run over by a truck. He's everywhere, and it's always a fun treat being able to see him. Very neat touch by Sonic Team, bravo. Back to the 90s American side of Sonic, they were the founders of Sonic the Hedgehog's love for chili dogs. This concept debuted in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, the very first ever Sonic cartoon in 1993. It has been a staple of the brand and character itself. It's appeared in plenty of games, TV shows, comic books. It even got a reference in the Sonic movie. I'm sure in the sequel he'll dive deep in the chili dogs. There's also a plethora of merchandise that includes it, such as plushies and action figures and posters. He's synonymous with it, and I'm surprised they haven't done a tie-in with Sonic for Chili Dogs yet. Why haven't they jumped on that? So Sonic the Hedgehog 2, released in 1992 for the Sega Genesis, in the final battle, you can see Eggman literally outrunning Sonic. This is always stuck with Sonic fans, as Sonic is supposed to be the fastest thing alive, yet Eggman was able to outrun him to the Death Egg robot. It's not just this, this has appeared in other versions of the game, and even Sonic 4. And while he's also able to outrun Sonic in the Mario and Sonic Olympic game series, I don't think that necessarily counts as those games aren't canon. They're party games, so if you choose Eggman and you do good, I think you deserve 
deserve to win. The jury's still out if he's canonly faster than Sonic, but maybe one day we'll get a definitive answer for this. If all you want is Yes, a lot of this layer has to do with the disconnect between Sega of America and Japan, because there was conflict here too. Trying to find a name for Eggman or Robotnik, whatever you want to call him, was surprisingly an issue. In America, they wanted to call him Robotnik, and in Japan, they wanted to call him Eggman, and they did. However, in Sonic Adventure, that's the first time that Sonic calls him Eggman in English. Since then, it's just stuck. Eggman has continued to refer to himself as Eggman, even though his real name technically is Robotnik. And he also rejected the name at first, it's an insult. But I guess he's just embracing the insult. Good for you, Eggman, don't let, don't let him bully you like that. While he is most well known as Dr. Eggman, the name Robotnik isn't dead. In fact, in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, he is referred to Robotnik for a majority of the time, until him and Sonic meet, where he calls him Eggman. Whether he'll go by the name Eggman or Robotnik is still up in the air and we'll have to wait and see. The debate of which name is better is still brought up. <laughs> Hypersonic is one of Sonic the Hedgehog's transformations in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles. You can unlock this transformation once when you collect all seven Super Emeralds. It's a fan favorite transformation even though it was only used in one game, and it's probably a fan favorite because it was only used in one game. A lot of people want this super form to return, but when asked about it, Izuka has stated that this form isn't canon and was only a graphics test. This confused a lot of fans, but I guess we have to take Izuka's word from it. They're very strict about hypersonic for whatever reason, and I think they want to get away from transformations as much as possible. They've even been limiting the use of Super Sonic himself lately, so I guess we'll have to see where this transformation goes in the future. IDW is the publisher of the current Sonic the Hedgehog comic book line. Immediately after Archie was cancelled, Sega signed a deal with IDW. They hired the people who made Archie what it was, including Ian Flynn, Evan Stanley, and they've made this book something very special. A lot of people say they prefer it to Archie. It's a fresh start, they're new characters, they're old characters that are gone, which some fans like and don't. It's very critically acclaimed, there's a lot of great fan reception around it, and it's even had some spin-offs. It's running strong, it's sold well for comic book standards, and it doesn't look like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. It was heavily speculated and then later confirmed by people who worked with Jackson that he did in fact compose Sonic the Hedgehog 3. There was a lot of stuff going on with Jackson that still exists to this day that made Sega want to distance themselves from the King of Pop, but it has also been stated that Jackson didn't like how the soundtrack sounded on the Sega Genesis. Neither theory has been confirmed, but one is far more believable than the other. A lot of complications sprung from this specifically when Jackson passed away in 2009. There's so many legalities that go into Sonic the Hedgehog 3 now that has prevented the game from being re-released. Jackson died and basically took Sonic the Hedgehog 3 with him. A very popular conspiracy theory in general is that the original Sonic the Hedgehog movie design was a hoax and the intention was to always have the Sonic movie design we have today. You know what they say, all publicity is good publicity, but what they were able to do was turn the bad publicity into good publicity by redesigning it and not just that, having a really good redesign. It brought more attention to the movie, expanded its marketing rollout, which in turn made the movie more money, now getting a sequel which probably would have never happened if that redesign didn't happen. The movie would have gotten buried in November. It's been confirmed by multiple high level people who've worked on this movie that this is just not the case, and it is very far fetched, but you never know, maybe they're lying and they're just geniuses. Guys. I'm really sorry about this one. One of the most popular Sonic memes on Twitter is a inappropriate one, if you will. It's a photo of Shadow from the game Shadow the Hedgehog with the caption in impact text saying, Nice c I don't really know how this became such a huge meme, but it is. I guess people just really like it. Knights is a game also made by Sonic Team who make the Sonic the Hedgehog series. It was a passion project of Yuji Naka. The franchise has had its ups and downs and is very, very dormant right now. It's not that Sonic related, but there's some Sonic elements in it like cameos and stuff like that. The characters from that game appeared in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, and also there was Knights DLC for Sonic Lost World. The two franchises have some crossover, but not a lot. All you want is Nike. 
Son Amy is a fan shipping between Sonic the Hedgehog and Amy Rose. It's very notorious in the Sonic the Hedgehog community. There's a very large fan base around it. There's some really great artwork and fan projects out there. There's a very supportive fan base around it, even though there are rules in place to where this cannot happen. Sonic's not allowed to have a girlfriend and the mandates that Sega put in place after the whole Archie and Pender situation. The Sonic franchise got a lot more strict after that. While the two do care for each other, it's all platonic. Sega actually references and makes fun of this a lot. I actually made a recent video about this topic, so if you want to check that out, go ahead. <laughs> Sonic Boom was a 2014 spin-off franchise from the main Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. It was aimed to captivate a more western audience, even though Sonic is the most popular in western audiences, intending to take Sonic down a more multimedia route which he is taking currently. This spawned many games, a TV show, merchandise, comic books. While the majority of this was actually really good, the games were horribly received, considered to be some of the worst Sonic games in history. It tanked almost everything Sonic Boom was trying to do. Not to mention, while the show was great, it was given a horrible time slot and was left to die by Cartoon Network, mainly because it was acquired programming by Cartoon Network and wasn't made by the studio themselves. Boom Rise of Lyric, which was the big thing that ruined all of this, was originally just going to be its own thing, not related to Sonic Boom at all, but they wanted it to tie into their brand new TV show that they were working on, attaching it to be a part of this new multimedia franchise. Obviously, that didn't work out too well for them. This did so bad it caused Sega to restructure their entire company, lay off hundreds of employees across the world relocate from San Francisco to Los Angeles, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric became the worst selling Sonic game ever made, Sonic Boom the TV show was kicked off of Cartoon Network and given to Boomerang, and put Sonic into some of the worst times the franchise has ever seen. In 2020, Sonic Boom was officially proclaimed dead by Sonic brand manager Ibo Gersovich, and I don't think we'll be seeing it ever again, even if there was some quality stuff that did come out of it. However, Sega has learned from this and is applying the same method to current main series Sonic the Hedgehog, with new video games being produced, a new TV show, movies, comic books, and merchandise. There was never really a need for Sonic Boom, and I think Sega has seen that. <laughs> Sonic Retro was one of the first ever Sonic the Hedgehog fan sites. They provided a lot of information about new Sonic the Hedgehog information, whether that's news or fan projects or anything going on with the community, interviews, stuff like that. It's still active, but is not super active. They don't really break news or anything like that or have that much stuff going on with their website. However, it should be respected as one of the pioneers behind Sonic the Hedgehog fan creations. Always show love to the OGs. Where did these niggas be at when they said they doing all this and all Around the time that Project Sonic 2017 and Sonic Mania were announced, IGN did a roundtable talking about it. Instead of just talking about the game, they just ragged on the entire Sonic fan base and franchise. Where in there they claim that Sonic the Hedgehog was never good, even though this is very contradictory to what the company itself has stated regarding the franchise. They were and probably still are hated by a lot of the Sonic fan base, but it's become a meme now. IGN has always been perceived as very anti Sonic and still kind of are, even though that their perception on Sonic has changed drastically since this was said. Giving Force is actually a pretty positive review. <laughs> At the end of every Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog episode, they played a little segment called Sonic Says, where Sonic teaches you about life lessons. In this one, Sonic teaches tales about not getting in a car with complete strangers, scratching Grounder pull up in a convertible, yes. where Grounder is wearing fake mustache and glasses, and tries to lure Tails into the back of the car before Sonic stops him and tells him not to get in a car with complete strangers. There are a lot of iconic Sonic Says out there, including this one, but with that fact, let's move on to the next layer of the iceberg. <laughs> Sonic EXE was a creepypasta created in 2012 that eventually spawned an entire video game based on it, and has since gone down in history as one of the most iconic and stupid creepypastas in history. Largely because of its comical nature, the premise is quite ridiculous, honestly. And also the excessive amount of videos that take place at 3am surrounding the titular EXE character. Heck, I even took a crack at this. What does that say? <laughs> oh, hey, stinky! Oh, no! <laughs> Sonic Extreme is one of, if not the most popular, cancelled video game of all time. What was supposed to be Sonic's transition into 3D, for what I like to call the Sega Killer, was pretty far in development but was quickly scrapped after excruciating work conditions and the game just not coming out as Sega wanted. People almost died because of this game's development. It wasn't a good look. And the game itself wasn't a good look either. 
before IDW, Archie was the original Sonic the Hedgehog comic publisher. It ran for 20 years, going on a legendary run, being the longest running comic based off of a video game character. It had many ups and downs, it started off pretty decent, got a little weird towards the middle, and then picked up around the time that Ian Flynn took it over. There were a lot of legal issues with it, it had a connection to the Sonic 90s cartoons, which made things really complicated for Sega of America. I'm surprised it ran for as long as it did, but I'm glad it ran for as long as it did. The comic ended in 2017 after Sega and Archie came to a mutual agreement to end their partnership. This is most likely due to Sega not really liking the direction that Archie was taking. It went against a lot of their mandates. They just wanted to take Sonic in a very different direction. Archie was crazy and featured characters that haven't been used in 20 years. And I'm sure Archie wanted to go deeper down the Riverdale route as that's what they're mainly focused on right now. No matter what you think about Archie, it was a legendary run and will never be forgotten. <laughs> Aldi McNo's hair was a joke in Sonic Colors. In the game, Sonic and Tails need to translate with the wisps in order to understand what they're saying. And there are a lot of wacky shenanigans that come from this, including mispronunciation of words. One of them being Baldi McNo's hair instead of Eggman. The writers thought this was so funny that Sonic audibly laughs. <laughs> Baldi Nose Hair? That's the best thing I've heard all day! I gotta remember that one. The fan base found this very unfunny and some of the worst dialogue in recent Sonic the Hedgehog history. But it's not just that. The writers found this so funny, they brought it back multiple times in future Sonic games. Hey! I've been looking for you, Baldy McNose Hair! Now that they're out the door, I don't think we'll have to be hearing Baldy McNose Hair ever again. So in a trailer for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, there's a shot where Sonic and Pikachu are running together away from this... thing. I don't really know the name of it. Sonic notices that Pikachu is falling far behind, but unfortunately he can't save him as he is murdered. And then Sonic is murdered too. <laughs> If any of you guys have read Sonic the comic, you know there's some weird stuff in there, man. Including the depiction of Super Sonic, which isn't used through Chaos Emeralds or just being more powerful. Whenever Sonic is exposed to Chaos Energy or is just under extreme stress, a literal psychotic demon-like entity manifests himself into Sonic's body. He is literally psychotic. That is what Super Sonic is. It's an alter ego that makes him go crazy. I think you guys could have guessed that this wasn't used that often in other Sonic media. Genocide City Zone was a scrapped level from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I know, the name is pretty crazy. There are actually images such as concept art and even a screenshot of what the zone would have looked like. I, well, not the screenshot. Th this is this is it right here. I'm sure I'll find when Sonic's design changed from classic to the current Sonic we have today, when Sonic Adventure released, they gave Sonic a complete makeover, giving him green eyes. It was very controversial at the time, and is kind of controversial today, not really that much. I'd say Blue Arms has taken the cake, as some Sonic media in recent years has started using Blue Arms. But for the time, people really did not like the green eyes. I don't think people care that much, I think we've gotten very comfortable with it, it's very popularized by this point. It's just the Sonic we've had, and I think a lot of people have accepted it. <laughs> Tony the Cat was a playable character from Sonic the Fighters, but the 2012 re-release. While she wasn't in the original arcade version of the game, she was visible in the game's files. They decided to bring the character into the re-release, and she's a very beloved character by a lot of Sonic fans, even though we haven't seen much of her. Her only other appearance is in the Archie comic books because of course it is. And while I doubt we'll see a lot of Honey in the future, if any of Honey, it was very nice of Sega to include her in the game. Fifth string, young Peggy Rango, slick with the ink. Sally Acorn is a very notorious Sonic the Hedgehog character, even if she's not a part of the main series canon. Created by the American side of Sonic in the early 1990s, she was made for the TV show Sonic Sat AM, appearing alongside other freedom fighters. She played the role of Sonic's love interest, but was still very strong and had a lot of great character traits about her that a lot of fans attacked. To. She later then translated over into the comics, as the Archie comics really were just a spinoff of the Sat AM TV show. As you guys know, those comics ran for 20 years. Her, like the comic book, had a lot of ups and downs, being over-sexualized at one point, and then getting that stripped away from her, getting a jacket, and even hints of her being possibly lesbian. A lot of people were upset by both of these moves, and to be honest, I just really don't care. So Sally did stick around for a very long time, even if it wasn't in, in any other media. While she's been gone for a while, 
while, and I don't see her being used anytime soon, there's a very passionate fan base with a very popular hashtag being called Rally for Sally. A lot of people really love Sally's character and want to see her and the other Freedom Fighters back. Whether that will come, we don't know and it does seem unlikely, but she's left a very big impact on this franchise and has been Sonic's one true only love interest. <laughs> Soap is a shoe brand that was around back in the early 2000s. They signed a deal with Sega to promote their shoe in the game Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic literally wears soap shoes, and those shoes that he wears in that game are some of the most beloved Sonic shoes of all time. It introduced the concept of grinding on rails, which has been a staple in the Sonic franchise since. <laughs> This one isn't too crazy, but the original name for Sonic Mania was Sonic Discovery. That's what it was pitched as by Christian Whitehead to Sega, but it was eventually obviously changed to Sonic Mania. I don't know, I like the name Sonic Discovery, but I do think Mania makes a bit more sense with the type of game that it is. We was ready to die, you in your legs. Dr. Eggman's design was based around Theodore Roosevelt. Here is a photo of Theodore Roosevelt, as you can see the two resemble each other very, very much. Sporting very famous mustaches, glasses, and even in Sonic Boom, when they redesigned the character, they took his jacket into account. Thank you, Theodore Roosevelt, we wouldn't have Eggman without you. Metallics is a character from the Sonic the Comic series. Each Metallics Bagnik is a part of the vast group of the Brotherhood of Metallics. Most of the models being based around Sonic, with some being based around Knuckles and Porker Lewis, who is another character from Sonic the Comic. Does this look familiar to you? Well, let me explain. This is a shot from the Sonic X pilot. This is an alternate style of Super Sonic that was used in like the early form for only a couple seconds. This obviously looks very different from the Super Sonic we ended up getting, which is the traditional Super Sonic with this one having white fur and just having different kind of spikes. This version of Super Sonic never appeared in the anime ever. This image appeared on the Sega's official Japanese website entitled Nazo.jpg, which made a lot of people think that the name of the character was Nazo, but the word Nazo translates to mystery, enigma, puzzle, or riddle. A lot of debate Bait and questioning started popping up from the fan base about this because we had no idea what the heck this was. A lot of people thought that this was a separate character because we have seen different characters in hedgehog form before, like Shadow. Maybe it was Hypersonic because Hypersonic is white ish. <laughs> well, over a decade later, Azuka finally stated that Nazo's true identity was simply just an early version of Super Sonic. But the story doesn't end there. The character was eventually used in a fan project titled Sonic Nazo Unleashed, which is one of the most popular Sonic fan projects ever produced. Produced. It's very loved in the community. Other than Sonic X, I'd say Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is my favorite Sonic TV show simply because it's so goofy and fun and it's just comfort food. There's so much silly stuff in there and unintentionally silly stuff too. One of the most famous memes from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is this clip right here. Snooping as usual, I see. It's popular for obvious reasons. <laughs> Despite what a lot of people think, the very first Sonic the Hedgehog video game appearance was not in Sonic the Hedgehog itself. No, it was actually in a little racing game called Rad Mobile, where Sonic is a little air freshener hanging from the rearview mirror. This was obviously just to get some marketing out there for their upcoming mascot. Shattuck is not a shipping between Sonic and Shadow, it's actually the combining of the two characters that was popularized in Nazo Unleashed. The Notorious Fan Project, and well, it's definitely not a canon thing, and Sega has never acknowledged this. It's something the fans like, alright, even if it's stupid. You make my Sonato is the shipping between Sonic and Shadow. Should we just move on? Sonic for Hire was a popular fan series, again, that was on Machinima. It was a spoof and ran for a long time before being cancelled later on. <laughs> In the Sonic the Hedgehog lore slash canon, there are two different worlds that Sonic lives on, the human world and the animal world. The human one being the place that we see in Sonic Adventure and Sonic Unleashed, and the other one being the place that we see in Sonic Lost World, Generations, Forces, stuff like that. More recent titles, they've almost completely abandoned the human world. Yes, it is very confusing, yes it does not make sense, but Azuka just likes to not make sense. We're not sure if this is ever going to be fixed, quote unquote, but we would sure like for it to happen. I think a good compromise would be having Sonic and his friends live on the human world, but they can stay on South Island as their residential home, so you can have those more cartoony wacky areas. But that wraps up this layer of the tier list, let's move on. Okay, save, I'm mad enough. 
Cybershell is one of the most popular and well-received Sonic the Hedgehog YouTubers of all time, pioneering the term of a Sonic tuber. Talking about whatever the hell he wants, Cybershell is a very creative, funny, innovative guy. And I'm very honored that I can call him a friend and have had a lot of collabs with him as of recent. Definitely go check out his channel. He's one of the best Sonic content creators to ever do it. You know that you should be Hidden Palace Zone was another cut level from Sonic the Hedgehog 2, but the difference with this one is that it actually was able to live on in the remasters that it came out from Christian Whitehead. It's fully playable, even if there's some pitfalls. It was an amazing addition, awesome fan service for a level that was forgotten but lived on with the fans. Now we can play it, it's amazing. Thank you Christian, we love you man. Ken Penders is without a doubt one of the most hated people in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise community, people who've worked on anything related to this franchise. People do not like Ken Penders at all. He's caused a lot of issues for this character. He filed a lawsuit against Archie and Sega, which somehow he won, which he definitely was not supposed to win. He was probably the cause for Archie Sonic ending. He caused a lot of issues for that comic, specifically the reboot. And when he was a part of the comic and writing it, it went through some of its worst years, but we're seeing weird subplots, ideas from comics that he wanted to make that had nothing to do with Sonic, and gross, gross romance that should not be a part of a kid's comic comic book. Soft and don't take this kind of tying into the Ken Penders Archie stuff we were just talking about, Sega put in mandates for the franchise so certain things could be done with the characters and brand and some things couldn't. They got very, very strict on what could be used and what couldn't because they did not want another situation like this. It's allowed a lot of really dumb things like Shadow's character has been assassinated because of these mandates, Sonic can't show any form of emotion, it's hurt our characters more than anything. There's also some more smaller weird stuff about about the universe as a whole that we'll get into later in the video. Sonic Adventure has been released on almost every console under the sun. It went from the original version to DX on the GameCube, then to Xbox 360 and Xbox Live Arcade, it's, it's very complicated. Sonic Adventure to Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut saw many changes in the graphical capabilities of the game. Some people don't like the textures that they used on the characters and environments, they think it's too shiny. Some like how the original game controls, they're just a lot of tiny little tweaks and changes that they made that were kind of unnecessary and just kind of made the game worse. Vector, um, yeah, he, he likes his older women. There isn't a lot of Sonic romance or flirting in the series that much, aside from, from Amy's one-sided thing with Sonic. Occasional flirting in like the early games with Rouge and Knuckles. But in other media like TV shows and comic books, Vector and Vanilla the Rabbit have a very interesting relationship. He is uh, very obviously into her. I, I really don't know how much to talk about. Yeah, um, who, who doesn't like a good MILF, you know? In the Archie comic book, Sonic displays a different level of power than he does in other media. He's considerably faster, stronger, has more abilities, whether that's super forms or a little gadget used to help Sonic out in a battle. While there isn't a set, yes, this is the most powerful Sonic, or this is his power level, it is noticeable, which makes for a more powerful, more experienced version of Sonic, which makes sense as Archie went on for a very long time. I'm outside in an AMG. This is a very interesting one. In the game Sonic Heroes, when you play as Team Chaotix, they're on a hunt to track down Eggman. While Vector and Charmy just want to track Eggman down and get to the bottom of everything, Espio is determined to murder Eggman. Multiple times throughout the game, he states that he wants to literally kill him. Death to the evil one. Prepare to die, Eggman. I had no idea Espio was about this life, but but this man is a real one. <laughs> Scourge is a very popular character from the Archie comics, probably the most popular character originally from there. Scourge is an evil version of Sonic, the ruler of Mobius. The character actually was around for a while, starting in issue 11. You just might not know that because they changed his character design up completely, changing it from Sonic, just more evil, to a green version of Sonic more evil. He became a fan favorite and really hit his stride once when he got that redesign. I put Scourge into the same category as the Freedom Fighters where I would like to see them used again in some capacity, I just don't really see it happening unfortunately. Smoking on the fish bone, like, yeah, yeah. 
Chaos. This one's a really interesting story as I find Chaos to be one of the most intriguing Sonic villains ever. Chaos was the main antagonist of Sonic Adventure and he's an immortal god-like creature composed entirely of concentrated energy. He's the guardian god of the Chao and he's also their friend. He was once a regular Chao but somehow was mutated by the power of the Master Emerald. Since then he's used his new powers to protect the Master Emerald Shrine as well as the Chaos Emeralds and the other Chao inhabiting it. We all know where the story goes from there but he was one of them at one point. Then he turned into that. But now he's this, and, and he's happy again, so that's good. I'm nice in the room. Nan's, also known as Neuroimmune Deficiency Syndrome, is a disease in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Victims of the disease become more physically weak and fragile, and the condition worsens over time. People who have the disease need constant medical attention, and somebody who had this disease was Maria Robotnik, which is why she was aboard the Space Colony Arc, because you need constant medical attention. It is almost exclusively applied to her as it's popped up in Archie Comics, Sonic X, and I don't see it popping up again in the future, but I guess Yes, we'll see. It's just a very interesting thing that exists in the franchise. It made it all more heartbreaking that Maria was eventually murdered. SA3, also known as Sonic Adventure 3, is the not yet happening sequel to Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. It's without a doubt the most highly requested Sonic game ever, and has almost been made a handful of times. Sonic Heroes was originally being developed as Sonic Adventure 3, and Sonic Unleashed was also being developed as Sonic Adventure 3. Since the game is so highly requested, it's obviously gotten back to Sonic Team and Azuka about how much people want it. When asked if it will ever happen, they said that it needs to progress the franchise forward in terms of gameplay and style, which kind of explains how Unleashed was almost that next game as that game took a very big step. It's currently not in the pipeline and we don't know if it's in the works right now, maybe. But I think the fan base is sure that it will come eventually, but some people do think it is self-sabotage because of the expectations being put in place for this game. So Sonic characters are often associated with Dragon Ball Z characters. Sonic being Goku, Shadow being Vegeta, and Silver being Trunks. All of these characters share very similar character traits and abilities. Sonic has always been very heavily inspired by Dragon Ball Z. Some people would say that they ripped them off a bit. They liked making their own versions of those Dragon Ball characters. And when Silver came around, they knew it was time to do Trunks. It was just the logical next step, I guess, in terms of ripping off characters. If all you want is the Sonic Bible was an internal document created by Sega of America in 1991. We were talking a lot about that split between Sega of America and Japan, and it was simply because they didn't really have an idea of what Sonic was. So Sega of America, with little to no exposure of the Japanese version of Sonic, made their own Bible to make it a definitive backstory for Sonic in non-Japanese regions. Sonic was just a normal hedgehog in Nebraska before a lab accident went wrong with Dr. Robotnik. There's a lot of stuff in here and I recommend you check it out, and maybe one day I'll make a full video on it. <laughs> The often referred to Toyoi Sonic, who you'll see right here, was actually worked on by Studio Juno, who worked four hard months on the project getting paid very low wages. It's very sad that they're not actually recognized for their work, but everyone even still calls him Toyoi Sonic, so I'm just gonna continue calling him Juno Sonic. And with that, let's move on to the next layer. I want the shirt that made my body feel all sexy. At the end of Sonic 06, Elise has to blow out this flame. Once when that happens, everybody will forget the events of Sonic 06, almost as if nothing ever happened. A lot of you will complain about this because it really doesn't play into any Sonic story after this because it never really happened in the first place, but 06 was always meant to be a reboot of the series, not connected to any other Sonic story, so I don't really think it matters that much, but it does make for a somewhat not satisfying ending. In older Sonic the Hedgehog media, a big personality trait of Amy was her use of tarot cards. When she used these tarot cards, she was able to predict the future and give herself knowledge of future events, and also being able to predict where Sonic would be in media such as Sonic CD and Sonic Battle. She also used them to curse others, which was, um, pretty crazy. It was definitely a classic thing with Amy, it's definitely not part of her character anymore, and it's perfectly understandable if a lot of you did not know this was a thing. <laughs> Dirty baby, won't you meet me by the beam? Grassmo was a chow made by the YouTuber known as Salty TK Dan, who's a really big, chunky, hunky man, might I add. When he found this quote unquote seizure egg, it sprouted a very powerful chow. Grassmo is unfortunately no longer with us, but it was nice when we had him. <laughs> 
Freezy is an interesting character. There are actually two versions of this character. One being in the Archie comics and the other being in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Two are completely different characters. In the Archie comics, she's a strong businesswoman who has her own media empire. Teaming up with Eggman at one point, but then eventually severing ties. She wasn't that present in the comics. It was an interesting character to say the least, I guess. She came on much later in the run. But the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog version of her is something else. In this story, she was created by Dr. Robotnik to get Sonic to fall in love with her, you know, get her attention. She was able to achieve this because she is designed to look like what a cartoon character might find attractive. But it was actually just a weapon all along to try to take down Sonic. She actually betrayed Dr. Robotnik, but then later on, she actually falls in love with Dr. Robotnik Jr. and then they get married and start a new life together. This is one of the weirdest characters, but something from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, I probably shouldn't be shocked. All you want is Nike. I'm sorry guys, this one's really sad. That's right, if you didn't know, in the Chow Garden from Sonic Adventure 2, your Chow can die. Yeah, if you don't care for it properly, or a certain amount of time goes by, it will pass away. At the end of the Chow's life, it'll enter a cocoon deciding whether it will die or reincarnate. You'll be able to know if your Chow is going to die if the cocoon is gray with a little yellow point at the top. If this is the case, then your Chow is going to die forever, and you're never going to see it again, unfortunately. But if it's pink, you'll be able to reincarnate, but you will still lose your Chow. This is something I think every person who played the child garden was very scared of so sorry i had to bring up this traumatic experience to all of you in the sega game fighting viper sonic and tails were both hidden inside of the game this was just a joke by a programmer but in his spare time he actually made it and eventually was presented to yuji yaka who loved the idea and it eventually spawned off in the sonic the fighters both sonic and tails share the same character slot and gameplay has resurfaced online so i think that's pretty cool <laughs> A very popular trait about Sonic the Hedgehog is that he can't swim, but if you know anything about hedgehogs in real life, they actually are very good at swimming. This was a misconception by Yuji Naka, who believed that they couldn't swim for whatever reason. Where did these niggas be at when they said they doing all this and all Uncle's Chaotix was a spin-off game, one of the very first Sonic spin-off games in the franchise's history. It was part of the Sega 32X, which was a failed add-on console for the Sega Genesis. It featured Knuckles alongside of these characters that are part of this group called the Chaotix. As you can see, it was a much larger group, but now only consists of Vector S and Charmy, all three of which were in this game, but it also featured Mighty the Armadillo, which was really awesome. The game wasn't incredibly well received, the ring tether mechanic wasn't something that a lot of people liked, they thought it hindered the gameplay a bit, but it is a cult classic and does have a lot of fans of it, it's just a very obscure Sonic title. <laughs> Sonic's body parts are a hot topic in the Sonic fan base, from his eyes, to his arms, to yes, his eyes. For almost the entire history of Sonic the Hedgehog, he has had one eye, a singular eyeball. There seems to be a divide down the middle, but look at this. It looks like Mike Wazowski. <laughs> That's really what it is. Just a giant eyeball with two pupils. That's just kind of what Sonic is. It doesn't look weird. It's visually appealing. It's something we've accepted. It looks good. Nobody has an issue with it. It's just a little weird when you think about it. But recently in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, they gave Sonic normal eyes. Two separate eyeballs. Originally, this was very controversial. It's something that Sega didn't even want changed, but it doesn't look that bad, honestly. But yeah, aside from the Sonic movie i'm not sure if we're gonna see separate eyeballs but i'm fine with either or i think both look great but i think we can all accept that the motto i is the most iconic as it has been around for the longest time <laughs> Sonic's fear of orcas comes from the fact that he is always attacked by them. Starting in Sonic Adventure, he is chased by a killer whale. Now you might be saying, okay, well this is a traumatic experience, I can understand why he might be scared of them. Well, it's not just one game, it's multiple. Orcas try to attack Sonic a lot, from Sonic 06, which is almost an exact replica of this scene from Sonic Adventure, Sonic Generations, and there are even references in the Archie comics. Orcas just seem to have it out for the little blue guy. Sonic Adventure was originally supposed to be for the Sega Saturn. Sonic Jam Sonic World was actually just a test for a future 3D Sonic game. With the Saturn already on its way out with the Sega Dreamcast coming in, the game switched over to there. But during its time with the Saturn, and even a little bit after what was being worked on for the Dreamcast in mind, models used in Sega Saturn Sonic games, such as Sonic Jam, were used. It looks almost like a completely different game. Late last year, Sega actually released screen grabs of Sonic and Tails in various levels. It was. Yeah.
Speaking of scrap things from Sonic Adventure, around the same time there was a dragon boss planned for the game. In the style of the Sky Chase levels, there was going to be this dragon powered by a Chaos Emerald, but it didn't really make a lot of sense because the Chaos Emeralds were supposed to be given all to Chaos instead of, you know, the stupid little dragon. For that reason alone, a lot of people suspect that this is the reason why it was scrapped, but maybe they just couldn't get the boss to work or be entertaining enough. It was clearly very early on in development as this image right here shows that they still have their Saturn models. <laughs> So, hedgehogs, male ones in particular, have their penises on their chests, and Sonic has this little circle on his belly. You put the pieces together. There are various title screen bugs in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, one of the most popular ones being, I've said one a lot, this one in the video right here. <laughs> Sonic 06 was originally going to be on more than just Xbox 360 and PS3. There were also plans to have it on Windows and the Nintendo Wii. But once when they saw how underpowered the Nintendo Wii was compared to every other console, they figured it would just take too long and didn't even really bother doing it. Instead, they split their team for Sonic 06 into two so they can make Sonic in the Secret Ring so they could also have a game for the Nintendo Wii. This obviously caused a lot of issues for Sonic 06, if you guys don't know, and even though I love Sonic 06, to death. The game could have been a whole lot better if they stuck the team together. <laughs> Sonic Extreme was a cancelled Sonic game being developed by Visionscape Interactive. They actually made the cutscenes for Sonic Heroes, so around the time of the game's release, they pitched their own game to Sega. This one being entitled Sonic Extreme, spelled correctly. It was gonna be this hoverboarding game where you skate around Green Hill Zone, collecting rings, doing tricks. It looked pretty interesting and had potential. They only made this like little demo and presentation in only a couple days. But when it was eventually presented to Sega, it was eventually declined. Even though it was said that they saw some potential in the project and might have moved forward with it, only a couple years later they announced Sonic Riders, which is a game where you ride around hoverboards doing tricks and collecting rings. I'm not trying to say Sega stole their idea, but... I'm sure I don't want to get into this one too much because it's kind of graphic, but Tails on a Bench is a meme that floated around that started from a very strange webcomic where two Sonic the Hedgehog characters get into a sexual activity with Tails, who is considerably older than the versions of these characters. Yes, this is a meme. Yes, it is very gross. Let's try to move off of it right now, please. <laughs> Before Shadow and Rouge were Shadow and Rouge, early on in the development of Sonic Adventure 2, not only did they have other designs, but they had other names. Terios and Nails. Shadow was Terios, also known as Reflection of, and Rouge is Nails because she's a girl and girls have nails. The names obviously did not stick along with their other designs, which I think was a good move. Shadow is a much better name than Terios. And while I don't think the name Nails is bad, it's not that much of a defining trait of Rouge. She doesn't use them that often. So I do think that Shadow and Rouge was a better move than Terios and Nails. But with that, let's move on to our next layer. We were just ready to die, you in your life. Blaze's origin has been a huge conversation and debate in the Sonic community. The reason for that being that she has multiple origins. Blaze was first introduced in 2005 in the game Sonic Rush, where she comes from an alternate dimension. But then the following year, she's reintroduced in Sonic 06, where she's heavily tied to Silver, who comes from the future. But then, the following year, in 2007, in Sonic Rush Adventure, she comes from another dimension. Since Sonic 06 isn't canon, and there's been other Sonic media since, then we now think it is canon that officially blazes from another dimension. You never know, maybe this will change again at some point. But as of right now, those are Blaze's origins. Fifth string young Peggy Rango. Charmy the Bee is a male, and he's a bee, obviously, who has a stinger as you can see right here, but here's the thing: only female bees have stingers. So what does this mean? Is Charmy trans? Or was this just a misconception similar to Sonic not being able to swim? I'm gonna go with the second as I don't feel 90s culture was as progressive as it is today. <laughs> 
Chaotix. In the manual for Knuckles Chaotix, there are character descriptions for each of the characters, including Vector. In here, you get a look at his gender, age, some of his hobbies, but the description of his character has an interesting little tidbit. An endlessly cheerful optimist, however, he actually has a stronger fellow feeling than anyone and possesses the strength and kindness to stand up against any difficulties. Believing in the existence of God, he came to this land after hearing the news about an island of miracles. Sonic Pocket Adventure was the game developed for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. It was heavily inspired by the classic Sonic games, and some share the same designs, except for Eggman. As you can see right here, Eggman is wearing his normal, modern Dr. Robotnik outfit. Buckles, and the big red jacket, it's obviously modern Dr. Eggman, compared to a lot of the other elements which stayed classic. We was ready to die, you in your life. Ghost of the Future is really interesting. This is a fan webcomic, but not just any normal fan webcomic. It's made by Evan Stanley. Now, if you don't know who Evan Stanley is, she is an amazing artist and writer who works on the Archie and IDW comics. Back in 2007, she started up her own comic, which still runs to this day. You can find all the issues on her DeviantArt. It's super well drawn and written. So if you want some mandated list comics, I highly recommend that you check these out. <laughs> Lemon Sundrop Dandelion, which let me say is an amazing name actually, that's not even like sarcasm, is a very interesting thing in the Archie Sonic the Hedgehog comic books. Here's the thing, Lemon Sundrop Dandelion also stands for LSD. If you guys know what LSD is, it is a psychedelic substance which you can get high off of. This was very popular in Charmy's kingdom called the Golden Hive Colony. He had a friend named Mello who died of the substance during an overdose. The whole Chaotix team trips on acid on this story via drug-laced chili dogs. This is real. These were in the comics. Thank you, Ken Penders. You did something right. <laughs> While there isn't as much to say on this as it's still relatively new and there isn't a lot of info on it, in early scripts of Sonic Forces, it was going to be revealed that Eggman made replicas of Mephilus the Dark and that he would have used them in the Eggman Empire Fortress just prior to the final boss battle. Even people who don't like Sonic 06 still like Mephilus and think he's a good villain, I obviously as a big Sonic 06 fan, love Mephilus very much and I would have loved to see him in Forces. Unfortunately, they don't want to touch this character sometimes, but you never know, maybe one day we'll see him in the future, but seeing as Sonic 06 isn't canon, and also it was a reboot, and they don't remember any of the events of that game, I understand why it was cut. In a character reveal trailer for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Sonic punches Mario into Minecraft. It was the Steve reveal, so that's why. But it's a big meme that Sonic has such a powerful punch that he can send you to Minecraft. You should make my earthquake! Knack the Weasel, or Fang the Sniper, whatever you prefer to call him, has often been referred to as a weasel, when that's actually not the case. He's a Jerboa. A Jerboa is a small rodent that lives in Africa and Asia. It is known for its abilities to jump. Why did they change it up? Mainly for stereotyping. Weasel is often a derogatory term used at some people, mainly associated with deception and thievery. Like, ah, you little weasel. So it really just fit his character better, even though that's not his real species? I understand why they changed it. It is a little stupid, but honestly, Knack the Jerboa just sounds kind of weird. So while we might call him Knack the Weasel or Fang the Sniper, just know he really is truly a Jerboa. During the early concept of Knuckles, he looked like this. No, no, not that one. This. There was originally going to be a licensing agreement between Sega and Nike, where there would be crossover shoes and products featuring Sonic, as well as Knuckles' character as a whole featuring the Nike swoosh on his chest. This fell through, as I believe this would have caused a lot of issues with Knuckles' character, specifically when it comes to licensing. Knuckles would always be a Nike-branded product, meaning it would be co-owned between Sega and Nike. Sega would not always be allowed to use the character of Knuckles and stuff like licensing, licensing, marketing, and merchandising. There'd be way too many roadblocks that'd make it overly complicated, and they wouldn't be able to make any Knuckles toys or tie-ins or anything like that. They'd barely be able to show off the character because of contractual agreements between them and Nike. So that's why now he has a kind of Nike symbol, but not really. <laughs> 
Sonic's Big Bad Adventure was an online webcomic created by Tyson Hess, who eventually went on to work on official Sonic the Hedgehog products like Sonic Mania Adventures, the Sonic Mania Intro, Team Sonic Racing Overdrive, and he even redesigned the Sonic the Hedgehog character design for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. He's without a doubt one of the most accomplished and most influential people in the community. You know that you should be well, this is kind of sad. During Sonic and Zavik's fight, it's revealed that there are a lot of people on the Death Egg. Hostages, prisoners. But later in the game when classic Sonic goes to the Death Egg, he blows it up. With no mention of the prisoners being saved or anything, it's presumed that they are 100% dead. And then, with later confirmation that 80% of the resistance was killed, it can be assumed that classic Sonic murdered thousands of people aboard the Death Egg. I'm thinking about dying my hair. There are official Sonic the Hedgehog mandates, but it's often said in the community that they aren't real. These are just made up ideas to make Sega look bad or have somebody to point fingers to, when it is real. During the conflict between Sega, Archie, and Ken Penders, Sega put rules into place that what could be done with their characters, as Ken Penders' work in Sonic the Hedgehog comic books was very much not so what Sonic the Hedgehog is supposed to be, like the aforementioned LSD, and some other stuff we'll get into later. Some of these mandates include Sonic showing emotion, Shadow not being allowed to have friends. They're very stupid, but they are real. In Sonic Adventure 2, it's very well known that Eggman blows up the moon, or pisses on the moon. Do people still make those jokes? I don't know. You know, this is kind of a big deal, and it's very easy to see, as the moon is visible from our planet. But after this, there are shots of the moon in future Sonic games and shows. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it's fully intact, what's going on? When Izuka was asked about this, he said, it's just rotated on another side to where you can't see it. Oh, Izuka, how I love you. In Sonic X, there was actually a fix to this. Eggman, in an attempt to get more empowered inside of the government, fixed half of the moon. I think if they just did this in the game, there wouldn't be that big of an issue. But it is what it is. It's just a really, really dumb reason. And with that, let's move on to the next layer. So when asked about Blaze's conflicting backstory between 06 and Rush, Azuka answered with this statement right here. In 2006, basically what happens is that everyone had, like, amnesia. Azuka, baby, how I love you. I'm outside in an AMG. We all know Gerald Robotnik, Dr. Robotnik's grandfather, the mad scientist who created Shadow the Hedgehog and wanted destruction upon the world. Well, when you want that, you're going to be arrested if people find out. But soon after imprisonment, the government realized that he was way too dangerous to keep alive. That means he needed to be executed, meaning they were going to kill him. But before he was executed, he left behind a tape condemning the world for their violent actions and what they did to Maria Robotnik. And also that the Space Colony Arc would be colliding with their planet, killing them all. It's without a doubt some of the darkest stuff that the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise has ever seen, but it was a breath of fresh air and something really interesting. This one's a bittersweet story. Polygon Jim, real name Cody Lawrence, was a member of the Sonic the Hedgehog hacking community who passed away in a car crash at just the age of 21. He was known for his motobug hack, and according to a post on the Sonic the Hedgehog blog, the developers of Sonic Mania placed Jimmy, named after the late Polygon Jim, in the Lava Wreath Zone as part of the Heavy Rider fight. It's a really sweet tribute and is one of my favorite stories in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. <laughs> Around the time that Sonic Boom started, Sega started referring to the normal main franchise Sonic as Legacy Sonic. This sparked a lot of confusion and also concern because it led people to think that this was an older version of Sonic that would be phased out eventually. That was just a large fear with Boom in general, that it would overtake the main franchise. Even though Boom is done and this is very much the main Sonic now, they still sometimes refer to him as Legacy Sonic, which is very weird. Remember those Sega mandates we've been talking about? Well, they're back again. According to Ian Flynn, the concept of money does not exist in Sonic's world. This doesn't make any sense as money has been depicted a lot in the Sonic franchise. One character's entire motive is money, even references to a functioning economy. But Evan Stanley has also touched on this where she says that money is a thing, but they've been asked not to depict its presence or use except in the context of certain characters. This is so strange, I don't know why this is a thing, it's just Sega being Sega. It's just really contradictory and dumb because there is money that's been shown before. Jeez, that's a mattress. 
Remember very early on in this video, like an hour ago, when I was talking about Mr. Needlemouse? And how I mentioned it was actually Mr. Hedgehog? Yeah. That's the case. It was just a simple mistranslation. We've been calling him Mr. Needlemouse for years, it's even been officially used, but it's always been Mr. Hedgehog, so the Sonic fan base has been wrong again. If you want, Let me just say, Knack has such a weird and short history. His first appearance, if you don't know, was in Sonic Triple Trouble for the Game Gear. And in this image, early on in its development, you can see Knack holding up a gun, a real revolver, up to Sonic's face. This was obviously entirely removed from the game. It might not seem as weird now, but back then, in like, even current Sonic, it's still kinda weird. Knack did retain his gun, being called Fang the Sniper later on, in the game Sonic the Fighters, but this time it was a pop gun with like a little cork to a wine bottle. Much more cartoonish and quirky, I guess. <laughs> The naming of Robotnik and Eggman has been a long conversation and debate. Is Robotnik even his name anymore? Well, when you look at Gerald and Maria Robotnik, those are official names used in the canon. Eggman is Gerald's grandson, so that means Robotnik is the true name of Dr. Eggman. His Japanese Sonic Channel bio, though, also says that his real name is unknown. I just love this confusing-ass franchise, don't you? Hola, at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, you can have two endings. If you get the good ending, at the end of the game, you'll be running around Green Hill Zone with Tails and the bright sun, enjoying the mission that you just accomplished. But if you get the bad ending, you're running alone as Sonic in the dark. He stops, looks at the sky, and sees Tails. This heavily implies that Tails dies in the bad ending of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Game Gear. <laughs> Dirty baby, won't you meet me by the beam? The ultimate life form isn't as ultimate as he might seem. As the bio lizard grew, he showed many of the researchers' desired traits, including self-restoration, regeneration, and self-reproduction. However, he needed a life support system attached to him, fueled by chaos drives, in order to live on. He's barely able to walk and live on his own. People need to look after him. I kind of feel bad for the big guy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> In Sonic Adventure 2, Dr. Robotnik blows up Prison Island. Somewhat similar to the Death Egg casualties, the Prison Island casualties are a little more real. We know there were a lot of people on there as a very highly guarded security base, but one of the only confirmed deaths was the pilot of Flying Dog, who was locked in the same room as Shadow and Rouge when Shadow Chaos controlled her out of there. A lot of lives were lost that day, unfortunately. All you want is Nike. In the Sonic the Hedgehog RG comics, in only issue number 50, Dr. Robotnik dies. However, sometime later in an alternate universe, there's another version of Dr. Robotnik, Robo Robotnik, from a zone where he roboticized himself and took over his world. In this dimension, he wants to rule the Prime Zone. He dubs himself Dr. Eggman, then proceeds to take on his adventure design, hence he is technically a different version from the original Robotnik, who died in issue 50. So yes, Robotnik from the original Archie comics is still technically dead, and will be forever as that comic is cancelled. One of the most popular claims in the Sonic the Hedgehog fan base is this game is Adventure 3. No, this game is Adventure 3 when none of them really are. But if there's one game that could kind of be classified as a sequel to Sonic Adventure 2, it would be Shadow the Hedgehog. Not only because it focused on Shadow, but also events that took place in Sonic Adventure 2 directly. Giving more clarification, backstory, what happened afterwards, where the characters are at. It's not Adventure 3, but it definitely is very similar to what a Sonic Adventure 3 would or could be be. Sonic Dreams Collection was a very popular Sonic the Hedgehog fan game that floated around the internet with some very weird and disgusting images. Sonic, Big, Rouge, there are a lot of characters that do a lot of weird stuff. It's hard to describe because it's very gross and graphic. I'm showing it right now, so if you want a better look at it, there are a lot of YouTube videos covering it, trust me. Where did these niggas be at when they said they doing all this and all It's often been theorized that Sonic is the ultimate life form. This is due to some people thinking that Gerald Robotnik saw the murals that depicted a hedgehog who would grow up to be Sonic, base his ultimate life form, Shadow, off of Sonic, who is the true ultimate life form. Once again, this is just a theory, and it's been heavily proven that this is not the case. Shadow is the ultimate life form, but it's still brought up from time to time, so yeah. But with that, let's move on to the final layer. Shadow. 
Eggman and Satan are surprisingly heavily connected. In Mean Bean Machine, which is just a reskin of Puyo Puyo, Satan is the final boss of that game, but Eggman replaces him in the reskin. It doesn't end there though, as in Sonic Runners, there is a Puyo Puyo crossover event where Eggman teams up with that same Satan to cause shenanigans. <laughs> Every time that we see Stardust Speedway or some other locations of Sonic CD in future Sonic the Hedgehog games and media, it's always the Bad Future version. Which makes you think, is the Bad Future version canon? Well, it's not factually supported or even stated. It can be heavily insinuated due to these locations constantly popping up. <laughs> At the end of Sonic 06, in Silver Story, Blaze traps Iblis inside of herself. It changes her appearance a bit and almost just ascends her to a different dimension or state of being. Kind of similar to her burning Blaze look in Rush and other Sonic media, but it's been confirmed by Miyakawe that she uses the powers of Iblis inside of her, and while Iblis still is inside of her, she's able to tame the latter. <laughs> Towards the end of the Archie run for Sonic the Hedgehog, there was an Unleashed arc. In the comics, Chaos is present during the events of Unleashed, and Rotor points out that Chaos was apparently able to keep the world's oceans from draining while the planet was split apart. Remember, Chaos isn't a horrible being, he's actually a pretty good dude. So yes, he was helping out. What a nice guy. Eggman Nega is a descendant of Dr. Robotnik. Him having a family tree after him means that he eventually engaged in sexual intercourse. That is right, Eggman has laid pipe. Let's give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Sonic fans really think every game is Adventure 3, don't they? Well, in Sonic Heroes' case, there's a little more legitimacy to it, I'd say. Mainly because this game was originally developed as Sonic Adventure 3 very on in the beginning, but eventually changed around, like, a couple months after it started. Like, I'm talking very early on. I'm guessing it changed because of its different tone, theming, it's just an entirely different game that does not take place in that universe at all. When I say universe, I do mean that it's, like, canonically in the same universe, but it's just not the same tone. The characters kind of allude to past situations instead of directly involving themselves in it. It's not a direct continuation like Shadow is. But yeah, Sonic Heroes is not Sonic Adventure 3, but it was going to be at one point in development. Alright Sonic fans, we all know the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games games. We played them as a kid, they were always a sleepover staple, but we all knew we were a little pissed off that Mario's name went at the front. When asked about why Mario's name was placed at the front of the Olympics titles, former Nintendo of America executive Perrin Kaplan stated that it was because of Mario's sex appeal. I quote, Here's the bottom line. He's Italian, he's really sexy, and he can get more women than Sonic. Yes, this is very, very, very strange, and it's also not true. <laughs> A very popular fan theory is that Mephilus is the Time Eater. According to Eggman, it's able to erase space and time, which is basically the same power as Solaris slash Mephilus. Because of this, a lot of people do think it's a remnant or a subspecies of Mephilus. But when Time Eater is introduced in Generations, Eggman explains that he met Time Eater after the events of Sonic Colors. It was the cause of the giant explosion that took place at Eggman's Interstellar Amusement Park. I understand they have a somewhat similar color theme with like purple and black, but it looks way more like a violet void than it does Mephilus. Which which would make more sense as this took place after Colors where there were violet voids. I don't really support this theory, I don't think it's true, but I think Ian Flynn or somebody did say that they think it could be real. You never know, we'll see. It seems like Sega wants to bring Mephilus back, but they're too scared to. You never know, maybe in the future. <laughs> Oh boy, here we go again. As we mentioned, Ken Benders and this whole artsy situation was really weird, and one of the weirdest things was Sally's virginity. Sega is usually very lenient with the Archie comics, and they told them, like, oh, do whatever you want. That's why there was such weird stuff like this. But one of the times they stepped in and said, no, do not do that, was when Ken Penders wanted to tell the story of how Sally lost her virginity to Joffrey. It's technically canon in the Archie comics, as in it happened just off screen, which is still really, really weird and creepy. I would say it's not a fitting tone for the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, but with the Archie comics, that was something that could very well happen inside of those. I'm not a fan of it, I don't think Sonic should be involved in sex or anything like that, and I'm very glad that Sega canned it, because like what I said. It's creepy. I'm sure Remember Sonic Extreme that I talked about earlier, like the normal way you spell it, and how it's very easy to see that Sega might have stolen the concept for Sonic Riders from this game? 
Well, yeah, hoverboards, the trick system, and it coming out in a very short amount of time after this was pitched. I'm sure Riders is better than whatever this game would have turned out to be, but still, it's kind of scummy. Speaking of Sonic Extreme, there was also a pitch for a GBA release of Sonic Extreme. Not much is known about this one, specifically when it comes to details, the other Sonic Extreme has straight up footage of it. This one just has this singular image. It's never going to be released, it never got released obviously, but honestly a Sonic racing game on the GBA might have been fun, I'd like to see what that would have looked like. Too bad Sega stole the idea for Sonic Riders for themselves. We were just ready to die, you were in your life. A concept from Sonic's early development that actually kind of made its way into the actual franchise itself was sneezing. Sonic would have the sixth sense that if danger is nearby, he would sneeze. Obviously, this didn't last for much longer, but there were sprites that were not used, and also the Sonic CD intro showed him sneezing when there was danger above. Other media like manga and this thing right here, I'm not sure what this is, show him sneezing near danger in this badnik right here. I think it's actually kind of a cute idea, but also I think it might have gotten a little old. You know, if Sonic was sneezing whenever he sensed danger all the time. Fifth string, young Peggy Rango. There was a point where a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog media had to like change up their design of Sonic. Video games, cartoons, and yes, comic books had to turn into the modern design at some point. So when the Archie Sonic comics decided to make that change in issue 71, Sonic undergoes a massive physical change, warping him closer to his SA1 model, and Sally points out how radical and awesome Sonic looks with his green eyes and shoe buckles, but like, how did he get those shoes? Only thing we can really say is that he grew them. <laughs> Only a little under a year ago, there was a lot of controversy going around about Sonic Mania. One of the people who worked on Sonic Mania Stealth started up a Kickstarter for a new game, and people were wondering why he was having financial struggles or wasn't able to just do the game himself without a Kickstarter. This is because he's not making money off of Sonic Mania. It was contract work, he got paid for what he worked on. There are no royalties, he doesn't get a cut of game sales, and a lot of people were upset by this, but he signed the contract, and it's not a normal thing that people get paid after the product is out. Tom Holland isn't getting paid a percentage of what Spider-Man makes, unless you work that into your contract, which they did not. There's nothing weird or wrong with what was done with Sonic Mania, it's completely normal contract work, it's normal. I think it blew up just because some people don't understand how the real world or business works. Sega is not in the wrong whatsoever, this was all legally right. You can still play Sonic Mania and enjoy it, don't worry. We were just ready to die, you were in your life. During a Sonic Forces Twitter takeover, Infinite sends a file of Sonato art, which is classified as Yaoi, a form of Japanese heteroerotic art. It's being used to make Sonic's life more difficult or make him feel a certain type of way, so that is weaponized Yaoi. <laughs> Early on in the development of Sonic Unleashed, it was going to be called Sonic Adventure 3. Azuka always has wanted Adventure 3 to be an evolution of the Sonic the Hedgehog gameplay style and formula, and Unleashed is the definition of that. But that's what he wanted, and it was almost there. In Japan, it's actually called Sonic World Adventure, as it is an adventure across the world. But they changed it as the new name is a bit more fitting if you think about it. I think if the game had some shifting around, so just taking out the Werehog and maybe putting in Knuckles, and changing up some story elements, and putting in new things to tie up more with the first two games, games. I think it could have been Sonic Adventure 3, but it isn't, and I am happy with the final product after all. But with that, we're officially done with our iceberg. Hey everybody, it's over. The iceberg is done. I, I've done it. Uh, it's over an hour long as you, you were able to tell probably by first clicking on it and contemplating if you really wanted to put yourself through this. I am just so happy it's done and I just want to say thank you all so much for watching it. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, that would really mean a lot to me. Uh, I've like de dedicated a lot of time. I've missed out on a lot of videos that I would like to have done, you know, but I'm glad this is out and I've been wanting to do a lot of scripted content, but this has just been such a big project. I've been needing to get this one out of the way and not pick anything else up. That's why there've been just so many like uh, news videos and like uh, speculation discussion videos like this in front of the collection. I have wanted to do character analysis and retrospectives and video essays, but um, I've been working on this thing, obviously, and it's so big and it's very daunting, so uh, that's why it's taken so long, but finally, next week, I'll finally be able to get back to doing those scripted content videos every single week. I'm so excited to do those, and I'm so excited this is out. Thank you all so much for watching. Feel free to Follow my social media, links to my Twitter and Instagram in the description below, and uh, make sure to subscribe, obviously, as I said. That that would just, like, really mean the most to me. Uh, you guys are awesome. New and old. You guys are the best. It's gonna be a crazy year. I'm so happy this video is out, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. Wah!